everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to introduce you, um, Katie Lockwood and Vernon Sankey. Um, I have recently read The Way, Finding Peace in Turbulent Times, and I got so inspired that I wanted to get in touch with the authors. And I'm so happy that they're finally, that, that they've accepted um, my offer of having a chat with them because um, I'm delighted to share this uh, my opinion of the book with you guys and hear more about how um, the book helps to kind of um, learn, like teaches you some tools um, about kind of navigating through these difficult turbulent times. Cause I know it's it's been tough on everyone in different ways, psychologically and um, you know, physically as well. And so I think just by working from the inside out, uh, we can learn so much. And having chat, talked to these guys um, earlier yesterday, I really have found that this is going to be invaluable for everyone. So um, before um, I get going, I just want to say that they co-wrote wrote, um, The Way, Finding Peace in Turbulent Times. And it's a must read, especially if you think, if you're, if you're kind of feeling it slightly lost or if you feel like you want to really improve your life and kind of find meaning and purpose and you're kind of maybe unsure about how to go about it, this is a great book because it gives you hands-on details about how to really kind of use these tools to focus um, on your daily goals and um, work in daily habits to really kind of empower yourself to make stronger decisions and just kind of live in a way that's more more giving and um just it kind of i i found that the books actually really taught me to kind of relax a lot more but we will get more into depth with that so can i start by saying hello to katie lockwood who um wrote the book as well so katie can you tell me a little bit about your background before we start before i delve into the questions yeah sure um first of all thank you i really appreciate us being on your channel so it's really great to um connect with the audience yeah. Um, so we wrote the book about, it was actually about four months before the pandemic started, so mm -hmm. ironically it was quite timely, mm -hmm. um, and we wrote the book really with the intention of helping people to, to understand these tools and, and techniques and this knowledge um, as we go through these times, but it's much more than just what's happening at the moment, and Yes. It's really a, a go-to manual so that yes. we are able to um, to connect to ourselves um, a lot a lot more, in, in, especially in these times. So, the, my my background is actually in philosophy and um, psychology. It's in NLP. Yes. I started in film, so I actually went to film school. Um, but I was really interested in um, understanding the human condition. And that was really where it came into practice for me. Uh, and when I started studying the philosophy, yeah. it kind of blended really nicely the psychology and the spiritual aspects. Oh, and I could sort of see how it was all connected. So yeah. the mind, body, soul is where this, this wholeness is so important. It's, it's, it's not just one aspect. We have to understand that these are all connected. Yeah. So um, for me, that was really poignant in... In understanding that this is all part of you know of the same body of, of knowledge mm. so so my my background is is in in leadership coaching i've worked with um, many different people on different levels and, and different um profiles and um really to understand who we are at our core so that we can really as you were saying live in purpose and live that meaningful life mm -hmm. which is really you know so important right now Totally. And I was like, I was so inspired when I spoke to you guys yesterday. And I just got, got so much from you, just from the book and from the energy of speaking to you both that I'm, I'm really delighted to have you guys on and, and to be able to discuss some of these points further. So um, just before we move on, I'd just like to say hello to uh, Vernon Sankey. Thank you for joining us also. Hi. Um, Hi. And, and I mean, you have a wealth of experience yourself as well. So it's great that you guys have merged both your experience and expertise and brought them together in, in your in your own kind of perspectives um, and really created this gem of a book. So um, I just wondered, um, can you tell me a little bit about um, our viewers, a little bit about your background or um, and where you, and kind of your yeah, your your journey to the psychology and writing your books as well? Because, uh, yeah, I know you've written a couple. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay, Andrea, by, by experience, you mean I've been knocking around a bit? 
<laughs> You've been doing some amazing things. That's the most it's quite, thing. Well, it's quite true. I'm very, it well. I'm, very, I'm very proud of it because experience of life teaches you so much. But yeah. I mean, my, 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 at university, I did languages. So I yeah. did French and German. And that brought me into the philosophers, the cultural changes, the, the enlightenment, wow. um, the poetry, um, psychology, um, reading Freud, reading Carl Jung. So wow. my, my, my actual academic learning at university is very, very relevant to what I'm doing today. Right. But I went from university straight into business. And so my, my life was really a business career. Yeah. But where the two meet is that I have never been worried in my career about what job I was going to have next or whether I was climbing the ladder faster or not fast. It never really bothered me. Okay. Um, I just want to do a good job and in particular work with people. And as I got, and I had wonderful, wonderful people. So I was very lucky to, yeah. to work in different countries. So I worked in Denmark and in France and in the UK and the US. And I got given very big responsibilities at a very early age. So I was running a, a, a very big international corporation right. at, the age, at the age of 40, which, which was pretty young at that time. And I knew very little, but the people around me knew had all the knowledge. So my role was to understand how you motivate people. What is it that makes people tick? What, what is it that stops people burning out? What is it that actually makes people enjoy what they're doing, right? So you can see where the two start to come together. And so when, and I still in, I'm still in business now, I'm still on the board of a very big French IT company. Right. But the, but the point of this is that what drives my interest is actually the interpersonal relationships, the way in which people can enjoy their life. Mm -hmm. and, and so I felt that it would be, there was a book somewhere in here. So the first book was A Stairway to Happiness, which is a blend of cognitive psychology, I suppose, and philosophy. And then I met Katie. Yes. And I showed her this first book, and which I thought was, of course, was a masterpiece. Yeah. And she looked decidedly um, unimpressed, would be the only way. And she kept saying, there's something missing, there's something missing. You haven't, you know, there's something missing. So, so when I started, thought, well, I, I better try and understand, because she's an intelligent woman with a great knowledge of the spirituality side of it. And I started working on this thing, and I suddenly realized that she was absolutely right. So the, the stairway to happiness has a fifth stage, which it didn't have initially, right. which is the happiness of harmony. Oh. And that happiness of harmony is the spiritual dimension, mm -hmm. which is implied in the first four, well, particularly the, the third and fourth stages, but isn't actually stated. And it wasn't really there. And that took us to, to, to actually start working together. And, and, and we just found we had a common interest in this. Um, and then we thought, well, we, and then Katie was very helpful in the videos that we did together on, on in promoting the stairway to, to happiness. And so then we decided then we'd co-author the next book. Wow. And we also found that in, in coaching people, the blend of experience and knowledge that we have was actually very, very helpful. So rather than just having, you know, an old bloke with all this so-called experience, but also having a younger woman with that experience. So here are two very different people, but actually talking the same language was very, very powerful. Absolutely. And um, and so that's what's that's what's driven, I suppose, the, these opportunities that we have and the, the stuff we're bringing up because we have the same ambition, which is to help as many people as possible yeah. understand how you can really enjoy your life and right. find peace. However disturbed the outside world is, yeah. is irrelevant uh, in relation to what you can make of it. Exactly. And when you see what people go through and are still very joyful in what they do and they have nothing right? and you say wow how could these other people who have everything be so miserable that's it that's a really uh, point. and so yeah. that's really what so what we're trying to do is to help as many people as possible to yeah. find their way so that's why it's called the way right. yeah. which actually it's not original you know the zen master lao tzu as his book was a tao te ching 
is the way of being. It's, it means the way of being. So we're not trying to copy that, but it is a way of living in a way that will enable you to understand what's happening, yes. manage, manage what's happening, because once you understand it, rise above it. And then you find you can take, you, the world stays the same, yeah. but you can rise above it and take decisions based on goodness, not on panic. Amazing. Well, I'm excited to hear more about how we can do that. So um, thank you so much. That's really helpful. Just get an overview on, on what the book's real hidden message is and how what you guys were aiming to portray in it, which is, comes across really well with all your references from Jung and Einstein and all the, the great um, kind of teachers, spiritual teachers along the way and geniuses. So it's it's really lovely because it's it's kind of filled with all these amazing quotes that really are empowering and, and inspiring as well as your, your words. Um, that's what really makes it fantastic read. And um, I just like to start by delving in um, and talking about the ego a little bit because I know that um, during these really difficult times, you know, we've seen a rise of suicide rates and self-harm, which is a real shame. And that's because, you know, a lot of people feel a lot of pressure, given that there, you know, a lot of there's been a huge um, growth in unemployment and then dramatic falls in GDP growth. You know, a, a lot of people have had compromised schooling, so they're going to have, they're having to balance things at home, and there's just a lot of pressure pressure on families now, and um, people that you know have had kind of shattered reputations. And I think what I'd love to ask at the start is to to, to see how like you know, it was a really interesting point that you said about our reputation, when our reputations shattered, our ment mental and physical health actually deteriorate. And um, just kind of wondering how that really does impact physically on our, and, and on our bodies as well as on our psyche and, and how we can kind of help to navigate through these times. I know it's a real broad question actually, but, and that's pretty much the essence of the book, but do you kind of, um, I mean, what's your experience on it in terms of, you know, with the, with the clients that you've seen that, you know, have you seen or noticed a considerable um, problem in that? Shall I start, Katie? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, if I could, if I could just put it in the context, Actually, which is that... Sorry to jump in. Katie, do you mind just muting? Um, because I think there is a bit of a, a lag, kind of a echo, if that's okay. And then you could, guys can swap. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> sorry about that. Not better. Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> all right. Um, I think the first thing to understand before you even try and, and deal with the specific is we need to understand who we are. Yeah. And when you ask that question, and we've asked that question hundreds of times to people, yeah. and they give us all kinds of answers, and they're all wrong. Oh, oh all right. interesting. So when you ask somebody who they are, they might give you a, their name. They'll say, I'm so-and-so. Yes. And then they might, as you asked us, what do we do, right? So they might say, well, I've done this or I do that. Mm -hmm. and then, or they might, then, and they might say what they've accomplished, mm -hmm. right? So I've been, I've, I've won this or I was, I was in the Olympic Games. I was, I, I did this, I did that, right? Yeah. And, and all of that is an illusion. Wow. All of that is not who we are. Mm -hmm. They're labels. Yeah. They are events that may have happened in the past, but they're not who we are. Okay. However, we are conditioned to believe that that is who we are. And yeah. that's ego. That's ego. Right. So, and all our education is designed to build ego. Yeah. Because even if in a business we say it's teamwork, right? We want teamwork. But how do we reward people? We reward them individually. Yeah. So we're actually, and, and at school, we're saying, you know, you've got to help the other person, but actually it's only the one who comes to the top of the class, who gets the best grades, who gets the award. Yeah. Right? So everything is built towards creating um, an illusion of who we think we are, mm -hmm. which is ego, and it drives ego. And everything about our environment and, and our, our society is whatever people say, it's about but you're you're on your you you better do well. You're on your own there. It's up to you, right? Yeah. It's up to you. You get on with it, right? You right. fight your battle. You do everything on your own. So it's building that up, and and that's actually an, an illusion. And of course, what happens is when that gets shattered, yes, then the illusion of ego, which is what we've invested in this, disappears. 
So who are we then? So if we think we're, we're, we are this image of, so supposing you, I know you see this, I mean, some of the business people who come are absolutely shattered. Why? They've lost their job, right? They have invested so much in their position and the chauffeur and the bits and pieces and this and that. And when that goes, they're completely lost, mm -hmm. utterly lost. And it doesn't matter if I'm just giving that example as a business person, but it can be a sports person. If you get a sports person towards the end of their career and, and then, or they get injured. Yeah. In fact, there was, I think we mentioned it in one of our books, was it young, a young lad, 17 year old, who had, who was just been recruited by one of the top football clubs and he broke his leg and they told him, rightly or wrongly, but they told him he wouldn't play football again, he committed suicide. Oh. Because he had invested so much in this image. Yeah. And, and it was an illusion as well. It was a dream yeah. image. I'm going to be one of the top footballers in the world. I'm going to earn all this, have all these girls and everything. Yes. And when that was shattered, he was shattered. He could not recover from that. So, so we have to understand who we really are and we're not any of those things. No. And once we realize who we really are and that we're not alone, we're part of something much more magnificent, much greater, right? If the universe is all around, which it is, and it's, it's everywhere you see it, we, by definition, must be part of that, right. right? How could we not be, right? So we're not separate. And once you realize that, you realize all these, all these labels, all these ideas about yourself, they're just nonsense. They mean nothing, right? That's I mean, weird. so I've got a I've got a degree in this and that. Who cares? Yeah. Who yeah. cares? What does it mean to anything? It's a piece of paper, for goodness That's sake. Right? It is it it pales into complete insignificance compared to what happens in life. Yeah, exactly. That's so it doesn't matter. What really matters is who are you? What what are you here for? Why are you here? What's the end game? Yeah. So when you when we ask people these two questions, who are you? And what you're here for mm -hmm. uh, it takes them a long time to actually come around to really actually finding an answer to it because ego is constantly in the way interesting so it takes a while to peel back the layers of, of absolutely who they are. It's all this conditioning and yes. all this condition need, needs to be unwrapped it's like an onion it needs to be unwrapped yeah you know a, a small if you look at a, a small baby they are in awe, and I've got one, because I've got one, one of my grandchildren is four months old, little Benji. And when I, when I talk to him and see him, or, first of all, he never blinks, by the way. Small babies don't blink, really? because they're so in awe of everything um. that they don't have to think. They're just looking at you, right, benign. They're looking at it benignly. And the only time they cry is when we need something like food, right? Right. Yeah. But there's no conditioning there. We start to give them conditioning by saying, you better not cry. You know, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. And we start the process and then the education keeps it going. What they are doing in some schools now is they're actually starting to introduce a whole concept of meditation. Yeah. And linking that to doing good for other people, being less, being, being less selfish. Less selfish, yeah. Because ego equals selfishness, equals it's all about me. And, and then it's it, devastating. It's a circle because you won't, once you achieve what you want or you think you want to make you happy, there's, it's never enough. So it's almost absolutely. Like well, you know, the thing is, well, if you want something, and incident, we can, on another occasion, we may talk about the question of desiring, which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons for suffering, by the way. But yeah. if we want something and we get it, we, we are maybe happy for a tiny bit and then we want something else. We want some more, as yeah. we just said. And if you don't get it, you're unhappy as well. Yes, yes. So wanting is not necessarily the right no. way to look at it. Right. And suffering is wanting. In Buddhist term, yeah. the, the, second, the second noble truth is that desiring, wanting, is suffering. I see. And that's ego. Because that's who wants? Who wants? Me. I. I. I want this. Uh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's so but Katie's got to add to this because Katie, she knows yeah. even more than me. <laughs> Thanks for that. That was really helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm just telling you, it's, it's more about the attachment that we have to that expectation. Um, and, you know, it's what we're experiencing right now, I mean, we've not gone through this before. So we have to navigate through our own internal mechanism rather than there's so many opinions, there's so much division. And that's the one thing that's, 
really come out of this is to see that division and that point of oneness when we speak about that is to actually realize that we are all part of this universe you know it's not about judging others and it's about really listening and consciously listening yeah. rather than judging someone based on an opinion that might not be to your belief system so once we understand that and actually once we understand we come back to that eternal truth we understand we're actually all part of the same the same microcosm is the same as the macrocosm so we're all part of of that same energetic space mm. um and i think and it's just to realize that when we attach ourselves to all those things that we're talking about those labels yeah we can't we identify with those labels so when those labels get taken away it's almost like, well, who am I now? Who yeah. am I without that label? Yeah. And actually just to be, to trust in the process yeah. of, you know, we're, we're all on this journey and the, the human journey is to be experienced without acknowledging that the external is, is there to push us to, to be a certain way. You know, there's so many society and the conditioning society is, Try, sort of putting us in this box so that's how we have to fit in and that's how we have to be but actually when we're just when we're content with who we are mm -hmm. then we don't need to be anything but ourselves and, and to feel happy within ourselves is you know the space that we need to be in I guess um that's really really interesting that you said that and I think another question would be and um, following on from that is how do we find out more of who we are because I think people do get kind of self swept away with what's happening around them and who they need to be or what they're aspiring to be. And, and then they kind of lose sight of, or, or have never really sat and thought about who they really are to the core. So, um, and, and obviously now we've had these times where we've had to stay at home and had a lot of, you know, we're, we're not as distracted. We've had a lot more time to think maybe. I think people are becoming more aware of like, you know their, their their impact on the world and how they can help people more but also thinking okay is this the job that i want is this the rat race that i want to go back to and and questioning all those things so i just wondered like how would you how would one kind of um go about searching for that finding the their way almost like the way of who they are what kind of what could they implement to actually practically help themselves to really find the essence of who they are yeah um i always say i'm really an advocate of meditation yeah. um, and just being still in the mind you know we've got so much noise we call it the monkey mind yeah. because we're so active you know and there's so much noise going on around us and if we're watching the news or you know it's so much negativity as well and we've got to understand that we're consuming that negativity all the time mm. so we've got to be conscious about what we're allowing into our subconscious mind yeah. so really being um discerning with what we're allowing in because that's our power you know right. nothing has power over us unless we give attention to it yeah so one once we understand that everything is energy yeah. where our focus goes energy flows mm -hmm. so when we take the energy back into ourselves we're looking at ourselves in a different perception and we're saying right you know what is it that i want what is it that's going to give me meaning what is my purpose in my life and actually, most of us don't think like that because we're so busy. We're so busy getting from A to B. We're so busy with the technology. We just don't have that time or that space to really think about those things. And maybe until it's too late. So actually having that time now is to really think about, is this what I want? Is this giving me, you know, what, what I desire in my life? And, yeah. you know, lots of people in, in that rat race mentality, coming home when it's going, when it's dark, coming home when it's dark, not, not having that time to be with their loved ones. Maybe yeah. that's given them a chance to think about, you know, is this, is this the life that they want to be in? Are they being present in that space when they're actually being with their loved ones? So that's, you know, meditation helps us to really, to gain that peace of mind. Yeah. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like a, a, an exercise for the mind because we get so used to thinking that we, this almost allows us to be in a space where we're able to just, not think um yeah. but, but actually in the non-thinking is when when we're able to be more present with the thoughts that are more powerful to us yeah and i have to say that i did listen to a few of your meditations last night and i thought they were so oh. profound and i just okay. i also love the fact that you know when you breathe in you think of one thing and breathe out thinking of another and just by like noticing your thoughts 
you mm -hmm. realize, gosh, I am worried about this. And I hadn't even thought that that was even something that was bothering me. So that's really interesting that you that you brought that up because I think that becoming more mindful of our own thoughts and our monkey mind, we we're able to like really feel away what our anxieties are and um, see, you know, what is it that's actually causing me to feel down and I don't know why or you know all of these things and in such a tricky time. And like you said, you know, being exposed to so many, deciding where what you expose yourself to is also really important. Um, so uh, just a quick question about actually the um, meditations. Um, I don't know if you guys are putting them on the site or anything, but I think they're a great tool to help. If you've never done meditation before and you think, you know, you want to, um, you want someone to guide you and just listen. I mean, it's great because you can just find a quiet place and just plug in and really just take it in and, and let it kind of take you on a journey and I felt that I really felt that with your meditations I've done quite a few different ones and I felt especially with the music and everything <laughs> very soothing and it, it does just take you out of where you are and, and really kind of make you introspective um but is there any way that you know our viewers could like watch are you guys selling them or is it just you're kind of waiting to see what you're going to do with them or well yeah what? I mean we, we we're, we're creating a library of them Yes. And they will they will address different things. Okay. So the ones the, the two we sent you yes. are to get people started. Right. Uh, there's, there's an awful lot of rubbish spoken about meditation, and it it makes it sound like it's a terribly difficult exercise. And you yes. can, and actually I had this conversation with this lady for, on on Facebook actually who says I'm having terrible trouble with my meditation. I've tried this, I can't do it. And obviously the stress that she's going through in order to try and achieve something yeah. is part of a problem, right? Because you're not actually trying to achieve anything. You're yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. All right. It's not a race. It's not, it's not an exam. It's not a, a hardship. It's just letting go. Right? It's letting go. Now we find it very hard to do that, to just let go, because as Katie said, and Katie's answer is perfect, is we're so busy. Yeah. We're rushing around so much that we can never answer the question, who am I? Yeah. Except in silence. It's in silent reflection, just occasionally. And then we suddenly realize that all our worries are either about the past or about the future. We're either worried about what happened and that, are we going to correct it and is it going to be okay? Or about what's going to happen next, right? Okay. And we end up squeezing our life into a tiny, tiny little sliver, which is actually the only time that exists, which is called now. Mm. So we're by, by, by just reflecting, you are spending more time on yourself, more time now, yeah. living now. And now, if, if I look at you now, mm. and I say, what's missing right now? What's missing? What's the answer is... Nothing. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Right. How, how can it be? In this Everything, very, very everything's very now. Yeah. Because unless you're thinking about, oh my goodness, you know, what happened? Oh, no, I don't believe I did that. Or heavens, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Unless you've got that, then you're now. So we, and it, you will only find yourself in silent reflection. Okay. And then you'll start to realize that all these thoughts are coming into your mind and you can observe them, including the thoughts of ego. So are you and, saying that, 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 that the ego is the main source of all our problems in the sense that it's, it's constructing these ideals of what we think we should be or think we should be doing? And well, that e is yeah. standing well, in e e ego, ego means me as opposed to you, okay. whereas, it's, whereas it should be us. Okay, so that's an interesting right. question because you said about if you, if, if I view, if, because what if I see, what I see in you is a reflection of what I see in myself, right? Right. and it, if if I if 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 I see you as something that is a person that's got beautiful capabilities, that has wonderful opportunities, that is a delight to be with, um, why would I ever want to harm you? And if I feel that about the world, the world is a beautiful world. Right? Yeah. We damage it.
we damage it by interfering. Why are we interfering? Because we want more of this or we want less of that. You know, we, we're, we're digging stuff out of a sea but then we're chucking it away because we don't know what to do with it. And we're damaging our world. And then we start to think and say, hold on, the outside world is a reflection of our inner world. Yeah. Everything that you see around you has been done by a human mind for a reason or another. Right. So the world we have, with all the fears that we have, with the weaponries that we've created, yeah. you know, but, but, but I'm, I'm in this group and not that group, I'm in this political party instead of that party, mm -hmm. is all actually a reflection of our inner turmoil. Nice. Once you change that inner turmoil and change it, and part of meditation is to actually bring some of those thoughts into your mind, because as I think, I am. Mm -hmm. If I think badly of somebody, that's how I will be. If I think well of somebody, that's how it will be. Right? Yeah. As I think, I am. My, my current thoughts determine my future. So if I change my thoughts and make them positive, mm -hmm. so will my future be. It's as simple as that. Wow. And in terms of like developing these new habits and learning to kind of incorporate them and changing your mindset, is that something that can be done almost instantaneously or, or, or does it take a long time to really intertwine it into your daily life and live by it? Or is it something that we could just start instantly and, and, and start slowly with? Or how long does it take to become almost second nature and to actually alter? Well, we, we answer, Andrea, but I'll let, let Katie answer. It, in truth, it can be instantaneous, in truth. Okay. In practice, people find that very, very hard. Right. Sure. So, so, but a habit will probably take two months. Yeah. If it's an ingrained habit. But in truth, if you want to change now, what's stopping you? That's it. That's a really good. There's, there's nothing stopping you now. Do it now. Why not? And that's why so many of the, the sort of New Year's res resolutions fail because we say, well, next Monday I'll start doing something, right? Mm -hmm. Well, but next Monday, tomorrow ne never comes, right? What's yeah. wrong with now? It's Why can't I think positively about whatever it is now? So if somebody cuts me up on the motorway, yes. um, why can't I just say, fine, who cares, right? Instead of shouting and screaming. Exactly. Do I need, so you... that's rage and rage, there is rage and people have a high rage. And of course it can take some time to change that. Or you could just say, hold on, that's crazy. I'll change that. So in truth, it's instantaneous. Now, the different philosophy schools will tell you that it takes so much time. And obviously the Zen school says it can be instantaneous. The yeah. Buddhist school said it will take you longer. And it depends. And in, in truth, human beings will tend to take longer. Okay. But Katie, Katie, you tell us about your experience on this. Thank you. <laughs> 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 um, no, I'd say I, I completely agree. I think it's the power of intention. So when you actually want to do something, as you know, you can say um, it can lead to a, a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. Yeah. So, you know, so if some people um, have grown into a habit of negative thinking yeah. um, and they don't discern where those beliefs have come from. So when we talk about NLP and our limited beliefs, you know, we've got to understand where that's coming from, where the root cause of that is coming from so that we can actually change it. And then we'll realize how that belief system is manifesting in, in all of our life. Right. So when we get to the root cause and then we are able to change that, and actually when we observe it, when we recognize it, then when it comes up again, we can decide to take a different action. And that's, that's the power that we have. We don't realize we have that power because we always look outside of us to give us answers. But actually, you know, it's like the alchemist, the, the book, we always talk about, we can go all the way around trying to find something when we realize it's actually been with us all along. And actually we've got the treasure within ourselves to be able to open that up and to, to self-realize yeah. what that is. And that's, that's exactly what empowerment is, is to realize that you are your own savior. So you can, you know, you're the one that can change your thought at every, any given time. And you're the one that can, you know, change the situation by reacting or responding to that situation in a much more positive way. Yeah. And therefore, it's like the butterfly effect. I and mean, this is quite scientific. It's not just a spiritual thing. It's very yeah. science-based. 
Sure. We know that every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. Right. So, you know, if something like um, a pandemic has started in one part of the world, it's infiltrated and it's affected every part of the world. Now, if you think about our actions, yeah. how our actions are, you know, changing, whether positive or negative, we have the ability to change that effect based on the action we decide to take. Mm -hmm. And then that person will take a different reaction. So it, you know how that, it's like the pebble drops and then that vibration of that pebble that carries out. And that's exactly what we're doing through the power of our thoughts and how the thoughts create the action and the emotion. Yeah. You know, there's actually much more power in the unseen. You know, we see the physical body, yes. but we don't know the thoughts of the unseen. And right. they're the ones that are the most powerful because of course is, is what yeah. is actually creating the action. Everything. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So, so I know that you also mentioned yesterday how it all is all informed from the subconscious mind. So in terms of um, how we can, you know, change these daily habits and kind of change our minds um, to, well, reprogram our minds to be more positive. I mean, is that something that we could, how can you come one to, like delve into the subconscious mind and really get to grips with, with that side of thing that informs our thoughts? Um, is that how, yeah, how would you do that in a sense? Well, I, the, the best way is through meditation. Right. Right. So the purpose of breathing in meditation mm -hmm. is to slow, slow the process of thoughts down yeah. right meditation is is about reducing the thought process and finding peace okay. that's what that's what it is right and so you slow that down and one of the best ways is by breathing mm -hmm. by focusing on the breathing and and focusing your mind on that then the other thoughts will not come into the mind because you're focusing on the breathing okay, okay. occasionally a thought will come along and you observe it but don't get involved in it. So you observe it and say, oh, that's interesting. And then ego will come along. Maybe it'll say, how long is this going to last? I, you know, haven't we got an appointment after this, right? Observe it and let it go. And it loses its strength. You may feel angry at something or, or you know, irritated at something and you observe it and it goes. It's like a, you, you are the screen and the ego is this thing that's going on the screen. Okay. It's, it's passing, right? It's ephemeral. Mm. The screen is always there. You are the screen. Okay. Wow. The, the bits and pieces That's that great. come on the screen are not real. Sure. They're just little bits of film. They're illusions. Mm -hmm. The screen is real. Right. So another way of looking at this would be to say, look at an ocean. And you are the whole depth of the ocean. Mm. Your life story is all the waves and stuff that happens on the top. So sometimes there are storms, sometimes there are whirlpools, sometimes there are calm things, sometimes there's beautiful sun, right? But all this stuff's going on here and you can observe it, but you are the ocean. Oh, that's a beautiful metaphor. That's who that. you are, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's who you are. Now, but that is where the depth of who you are is. And then you realize all this stuff who cares? Oh, it's meaningless, matter. right? It yeah. doesn't matter because I can deal with anything. I'm, I'm here. I'm in the ocean. I'm that's the screen. Right. All this stuff that's going in front of me is just an illusion. Okay. It's not real. So when we come back and, and just to build on what Katie said, Lao Tzu says the, the importance of what is depends on what is not. Right. right. So now that sounds like it's very difficult, but it's not. So if I take a glass yeah. Right. Just, just imagine a glass, an empty glass. Mm -hmm. What's the most important part of the glass? Uh, the glass. Why would you say that? Um, because without the glass, it doesn't exist. Well, one might, but supposing we put a different point of view, the most important part of the glass is the space inside it. Ah, uh, yeah, of right. course. So the importance of what is, which is yeah. your glass, right? Yeah, yeah. Is actually what is not, which is inside. Oh, so you're... we we tend to ignore space, but space is everywhere. You can't see a cloud unless there's a space behind it. I see. The space is a room. The, the, the room is just four walls, right? 
in a room is nothing. The space inside is everything. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. That's consciousness. Right, right. Now, when you realize the importance of that, that is, that is what matters. And science has now proven that, has demonstrated that. So if I take a piece of metal, right, yes. a piece of steel, yes. you will say to me, that's a piece of matter, right? That's matter. Yeah. And I'll say to you, no, it isn't. Because when you look at matter now, which you can under a very, very strong microscope, you realize that it's made up of tiny little pieces of energy with a lot of space between it. Mm. So is it matter? No, it's space. Oh, gosh. We, we, I wish we were more material, but we mistake the word material for things. Yeah, yeah. Material, a tree would be, is, a, is something we'd like people to be more interested in. Okay. That's, that's material. Yeah. But no, we, we mistake the word material. Wow, that's a, that's a really so, good So, but by starting to observe this and understand what's important, mm -hmm. you then realize I don't actually need very much to, in, to, to enjoy my life. I need very little. Yeah, right. so it's almost like- almost, I mean, how many homes do you need? How many homes can you live in at one time? How many cars can you have at one time? You can't right. drive them all at once, can you? Exactly, it doesn't make you any- No, and if you have a powerful car and you drive it badly, look what's happened to Tiger Woods. That's true. Right. So you don't, we don't need that. And if we can be more content with what we have yes. and understand that we don't, that there's nothing really missing in our life. We just create that miss. And that's ego. Ego wants more. Ego wants conflict. Um, ego can't live without it. And as soon as you allow ego, this is the, the judo principle, the, the martial arts principle, is you use somebody else's, you let the other person's energy you don't use your energy. You don't need to. So, you just, so if you let ego do it, whatever it wants without actually reacting to it, you don't react to it, it loses its power. It disappears. Right, right. So, so you can defuse any situation. Somebody gets very, very angry and you don't respond to it. You say, Sorry about that. Right? It immediately diffuses it. Mm. If you go against it, it's exactly the principle. It's, it's, you know, the second law of thermodynamics, you will get a bigger and bigger reaction. That's interesting. Wow. And so I guess science, that's science that's and spirituality are very, very close. Yes. And I suppose that's what you mentioned about us all being connected and how, you know, our energy, everything is energy and how we react to certain Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Even our mindlessness, when we, you know, throw things away and we kind of think, oh, that's not going to you know, we think for ourselves, oh, well, you know, that doesn't matter if I don't recycle. And, you know, everything has an effect. Everything has a cause. All, absolutely. We're, we're all, it, everything is connected to everything else. Oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, the scientists, so Einstein realized this and Max Planck, they realized this. So the top scientific brains understood why this was. And yeah. they came to this realization, but that wasn't where they started from. So, so if you try and explain something difficult and, and some of the thing concepts are a bit difficult, you use words, right? And so to start with, you use words, but words are very inadequate. Mm -hmm. Words are form and they're man-made. Yeah. It's very hard. How can you explain, you know, how, how can you explain a beautiful, beautiful sunset in words? It's very, very yeah. hard. Huh. You can't get that <laughs> thing, right? So, so the scientist starts with words and realizes that's not good enough. They cut, they, there's a limit to what words can do. So then we go into mathematics mm. Bec and, and algebra because the, that is much more complex and can get you much further in the explanations. Right. So relativity cannot be explained in words. It makes no sense at all. Okay. You, get as far, you get much, much further with maths, with these complicated formulae. Right. Okay. And Einstein and Max Planck got as far as they could with that. Mm. And they realized, you know, and everybody's saying, my goodness, what fantastic stuff. Your Nobel Prizes left, right and center. You've understood really the limits of almost the limits of science. And they said, but we haven't understood anything because what we've realized is how little we understand. Mm. This world, this, this magnificent universe is so complex. It's so interrelated. We have no words to describe it and we have no mathematical formulae to describe it. It is beyond all comprehension. Gosh. And that is what their genius is. Their yeah. genius is that they could see that. And that's where they come back and link up with the sages of the past who were saying this all along. 
but they didn't have a scientific proof for it. That is what Jesus saw. Right? Yeah. That is what Lao Tzu saw. That is what Buddha saw. Yeah. They all saw this magnificence, but they couldn't prove it. And it's very hard to get that across. How do you get that across? So, so you know, we try and take people to the door yeah. and we get them, but they're then pushing the door outwards. But no, the, the, the door actually has to be pulled in. It's mm -hmm. inwards, not outwards. Yeah, so starting from the inside and working out. Absolutely. The reality. door is not one you push out, the door is one you push in. Yeah. Fair yeah. Win. That's amazing. And, that's and I mean, we can take people really there. We will, we will help to take people there. But I'm just trying to explain some of the concepts. But in the end, it's quite simple. Because yeah. if you know who you are and you realize the power of ego to damage things, right? Yeah. Because as soon as I, if I start being defensive about anything, for example, mm -hmm. that's ego. Yeah. Right? So if somebody argues with me and I start feeling, oh, oh, that's ego. That's ego saying, your ego says, you know better than they do. How the heck do you know that, right? Yeah. How often is that wrong, right? But if you can observe that by just stopping a bit, breathing. Yes. And saying, yeah, why? I'm learning all the time, right? Mm. Why would I want to be in conflict? Right, exactly. And it goes away. I and mean, who cares? How will, in, in a day's time, who will know? Mm. Interesting. Wow, that's, that's, that's fascinating stuff because I think, I think it makes complete sense what you're saying. And um, just sometimes it's just, it's being really kind of unaware of, of, of that and, and then kind of wondering why, you know, why people worry about certain things and, and you know, are so reactive. And it's about kind of taking that time to, breathe and find space and then really ask the, the right questions so is that how you guys work with your with your clients I know that you're both coaches do you kind of help them decipher this or kind of get to the essence of who they are through and finding peace through through this journey and just do you, is that is that how you guys approach working with your clients yes it depends on the person it depends on, the, on 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 what where they've got to and where they are in their in their in their life but yes yeah. essentially it's to provide you know the, the sense of hope because um it is perfectly possible to shift wow. very radically when you understand what's going on yeah you know it's it you have to just understand what's going on and sure. and we all the philosophies of a past are of value here if you take the four noble truths of Buddhism, you know, the first truth is that the world is impermanent. Mm. Now look at COVID. If, COVID, if ever you wanted a demonstration that the world is impermanent, COVID suddenly appeared, right? Yeah. Everybody's plans world over had to shift, right? Change. Right? Sure. But in truth, the world is constantly impermanent. So we make plans because we think that's what we should do, except that we get attached to those plans. Yeah. And when they don't work out, we get very angry and we get cross and we get frustrated and we get fr stressed. Right? Mm. But if you realize that the world is impermanent, yes, I can make plans. But if I'm so wedded to those plans that they don't come out right every yeah. time I get stressed, yeah. then I, I'm going to have a tough time. Right? Sure. So the first law, of first noble truth is the world is impermanent. The second one is suffering is attachment, which is the same as being stuck in with the ego believing the ego is who we are mm. and the third noble truth is remove the attachment and you remove the suffering and then so you kind of ride the wave of what is and, and yeah. focusing on the exactly practice. what yeah. is is so important okay. if you accept what is now that doesn't mean to say and i mean katie and i talk about this quite a lot it doesn't mean to say you accept bad behavior you don't right no. but you deal with it from a position of goodness not from a position of anger sure so it's, and I mean, it, it happens in my business life regularly that things happen which are not right, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to let them go. I'm not happy. I'm not going to say, okay, right? Because it's not okay. Yeah. But I can deal with it in a compassionate way. Sure. And a firm way, but without causing the, the friction. What I'm, we're trying to do is to get it solved, not to try and get it conflictual. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, that's so fascinating. There's so much in there. And I mean, your book- There's a lot in what so we're trying to do. Depth, doesn't it? And, and, you know, the book has 
some great chapters in, in all aspects of life really and that's what I think is so interesting about it it really does does kind of tackle these different areas and cons causes of concern and then how you can go about helping yourself um, which is really really a useful kind of tool for kind of if you're if you're looking to make a change or if you're feeling miserable or, or, or if you're feeling that something's not right or something's missing. I think that's of often the case. We feel that, you know, I met a friend the other day and she said, I just feel down, but I don't know why. And I feel guilty that I feel down because, you know, I'm fortunate. So it's almost like you can intellectualize why you're, why you're, you can feel the way you're feeling and you can intellectualize that you're in a good position, yet you still can't seem to feel at peace. And I think that's what's really interesting about the work that you, you do is, is that you both do is to help people really find the essence of themselves mm. so they mm. can find peace and um that's amazing i think i mean we've run over by quite a lot because i just got oh, that. <laughs> but i guess what i could just ask as a final thing maybe for katie because um what i would ask is um how would people deal with the loss i mean i know it kind of what we've talked about would help with this but how you know if you've lost a loved one and you're feeling really or, you know, yeah, if you're, if you're fe feeling kind of um, really upset and angry with the world almost that you've lost someone that you really love due to COVID or, you know, just in general, how could one get themselves in a better state or in a healthier mind frame rather than feeling utter turmoil and, you know, which is understandable, an understandable reaction and a completely human emotion? Um, mm -hmm. How can someone build themselves up or help themselves through the this, this time yeah I, again it's really comes down to love and yeah. I keep coming back to the heart space and love because you know this we can't control life we can't control what happens to other people and and that's the way that this that's the beauty of life as well as you know the hardship of life um, so to experience um, grief and loss is to to feel the memories of that person is still there you know and the soul is still existing yeah. um, and it's not it's not um, that's you know death is not the end yeah. um, but to really to feel that love for somebody mm. that still those memories will still live on as long as you know as, as long as your life lives on so just yeah. to to celebrate that life rather than to see it negatively and you know we've all got a time that we all will go from this world and I think just to yeah to, to honor the the time that they were here and to to feel present in the memory of of that loss rather than to and it's and it's okay to grieve you know it's we're not saying to suppress emotions that's right. part of this is to feel those emotions and to feel that that loss and, and that grief but when we can turn it into something which is much more um you know just to feel love around that grief and to, oh. to accept it for what it is mm -hmm. and then to to celebrate it yeah. is you know and, and to, my, my um, aunt died of cancer oh. um not just right. recently and yeah. but, but I acknowledge it you know and, and I love her and I, and I just yeah. feel that, that that's a memory that will always exist and you know, there's so much you can do and it actually can empower people to to make positive changes, whether it's, you know, set up charities and, and to do actually, it makes people sort of realise that there's really being present in this moment. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, you know, so just to be present in this moment and to be grateful and to appreciate that life is so precious. Absolutely. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well done. But, but so, no, Katie, that's a wonderful that's response. I, I just add, those who live in our hearts never die. Yeah. And and it's, there's nothing wrong with feeling sad and upset. I mean, part of a grief process is actually to be able to express that. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lady called Elizabeth Ross Kubler, and she, she did, um, she's a neuroscientist and psychologist, and she found the, the there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a process that you have to go through. And it, you don't, you can't jump that process. The process has to take place. Yeah. Um, and it, it goes through anger is part of it. You know? yeah. Negotiation 
and then eventually you get to acceptance and that's depression as well. And, and then you start picking it up. Um, but there's nothing wrong with feelings. You see, pe people, pe we were getting part of our conditioning is, is, is to repress feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, we say to boys, you mustn't cry, you know, and deal with your own problems. I mean, what we're doing all the time is we're, we're encouraging people to repress their feelings. Now, of course, what we don't want them is to go, for everybody to go wild every time something's wrong, right? Yeah. But understand your feelings. Your feelings are what they are. One of our meditations actually is exactly on this, is, is accept your feelings for what they are. And, and, and by doing that and, and observing them and accepting them, that is perfectly not, that is part of your human, being human, human, being human right? Exactly. Um, so don't go, you don't, it, it's okay to, to feel anger. It's okay. What's yeah. not okay is how you, what actions you take as a result of that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. but, but feeling them, it, to, to repress those is completely wrong. It causes much more problems. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as what Katie was saying about love is completely right. I mean, I had a, a lady who, who was extremely, extremely upset. And this was like for two years after her mother died. Yeah. She was still, she would have a, in a dinner party. And I went to one dinner party with her. She, 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 she sort of collapsed in tears at the table, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. And so she came and said, can you help me? Because, because I am still really really upset at the loss of loss of my mum right? uh -huh. and I and I said well I'll do what I'll do what I can yeah. and essentially in the discussion that we had and I'm cutting a long thing quite short yeah. is what was happening was she would visualize occasionally and it could be at any time she would visualize her mum yeah. And her mum would be looking like she did towards the end of her life when she was in pain, looking yeah. unhappy, and it would immediately trigger this yeah. reaction immediately. She, she, and she, and, and so what we did was to start to shift this image of her mum. Yeah. When was it? What, what did you enjoy with your mum? So we used to go, I'd like to go for walks in, in, in the woods with a dog and say, and what did she look like then? What was her face? She was absolutely, she loved it. She was smiling all over. Wow. Replace the negative image with a positive image, right? Yeah, yeah. And slowly, and then, and, and that, that worked quite well. And then I went to a party again and there she was, we didn't know she was going to be there. She was the other side of the room and she just looked at me and she went, Aww, that's all she lovely. did. That's, we, all, you that's all she did. That's yeah. all she needed to do. Yeah. But it was, yeah. It was a wonderful thing. So that is the love that Katie is talking about. Yeah. You, you, from a negative attachment to a positive view of, of, of a loving relationship, because that's what she would needed to keep. That's what will be there forever. Yeah. Interesting. Gosh, well, thank you so much, both of you. Vernon and Katie, you've been absolutely amazing. There's so much info and insight insights that I think are just going to be really beneficial to all our viewers so thank you so much for joining us and um, I just want to say that you can purchase the way finding peace and heaven and times on Amazon um, it's definitely a must read if you want to find peace and kind of change the what your thought pattern and it's just it's a really lovely read as well because there's so much in there to kind of improve and enhance your life, even if you want to kind of be uplifted or even if that you don't see there's any issues that you just want to, you know, a, a lovely read. It's just really inspiring. So thank you so much for joining us. There's so ma many good tips on there. And um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. So. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. 